Upon my inauguration, I will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration and commence the largest deportation operation in American history. We have no choice. This is not sustainable. Uh, you don't have to know very much to know. Uh, I looked at Tucson, Arizona today. Did you see that? Thousands and thousands of people all over. Nobody, people walk out of their house, they say, what's happened to our beautiful place? But this is in many towns and cities all over. Look at New York City. But, you know, you see New York, but you don't see other places so much. And it's happening like that. Much worse, actually, much worse. This is not sustainable. No country can sustain it or financially can sustain it. Nobody could possibly sustain something like this. And they're putting young children into schools who don't speak any English, and they're in school. Nobody is there to teach them. They're sitting in class. They don't understand anything that's going on in the school. It's a horrible situation, and it would have never happened in a year. We had the strongest border in history. Now we have the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been a third world country that had a border like this, ever. There's never been anything like it. We built nearly 500 miles of border wall. You know, they like to say we built 57 miles. No, we built o over 500. In fact, uh, if you look at the various government statistics, we did a great job. And I had to fight Paul Ryan. I call him Paul Rhino. But I had to fight Paul Rhino, and I had to fight uh, Mitch McConnell, another beauty. Be and I ended up taking the money out of the military. I said, it's an invasion. I'm sorry. And we built 500 miles of wall which is what it is. It's an invasion. And then was ready to do another. We had already the wall built, and we were going to add another 200. We, I wanted to do five. We did five. I was going to add another 200. We built it. It was all set. All we had to do was erect it. Very simple. Could have been done in three to four weeks. And uh, then we had the election situation, and they took over. And they actually took it away and put it in faraway places. And Texas wanted to buy it and put it up, and they wouldn't sell it to them. And Arizona wanted to buy it and put it up, and they wouldn't sell it to them. But we got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. That was an amazing thing. I went to the State Department. I said, Mexico has to do this. They have to do this. And they said, they'll never do it, sir. I said, yes, they will, 100 percent. And we had a little negotiation with Mexico. And I said to him, listen, if you don't do it, they said, no, we're not going to do it under any circumstances. And I happen to like the president of Mexico, even though he's a socialist, but you can't have everything, right? <laughs> I like him. He's a good man, but he's a little different than my way of thinking. And I said, no, you're going to do it. And I met with their top representative. And he sort of laughed at me when I said, you're going to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. And uh, he said, no, we're not going to do that. I said, here's a story. I have in front of me a piece of paper, and the paper says very strongly that on Monday morning at 7 o'clock, you're going to be charged 25 percent tariffs on all of the cars that you're sending into the United States. You know, they took 32 percent of our automobile business prior to us getting there, 32 percent. They send millions of cars in. They said, we're going to tax you 25 percent, and 25 percent on every other product you sell into the United States. And he said, sir, do you mind if I make a phone call? <laughs> It'll just take a minute. And he came back five minutes later, and he said, sir, we'd be honored to let you have 28,000. It was rather amazing. Rather amazing. And the woman in the State Department, who's actually a very good woman, she has never won any of these things, but she was a good woman. She said, I've never seen anything like that in my life. But we also got remain in Mexico. That means they stay in Mexico. They don't come in. They stay in Mexico. And Biden ended that. And that was not easy to get. And in fact, they went to a judge to have it terminated. And the judge said, you can't do this. You'll destroy our country. He let it stay. He wouldn't do it. But it terminated in six months. And it should have never been done. And uh, deported illegal aliens by the tens of thousands. We had. Uh, MS-13, the meanest gang, they killed two young girls with knives walking to school in Long Island. They killed them with knives. They carved them up because shooting is too quick. They love using knives. They're sick. And by the way, we have people in ICE and Border Patrol. They're unbelievable. They're patriots. They're incredible. If we didn't have them, this country would be overrun. They don't get enough credit. And they'll run into a nest of I mean, They call them a nest and nest. And they'll run, and you'll see those fists. And I have a lot of friends that are in these front rows. But, and some of them are tough, but they don't want this job. 
This is not for them, I will tell you. But these guys are tough and smart and incredible patriots, and it's a very dangerous — it's a very dangerous living, but they do an incredible job. We took them out by the thousands and thousands. And, you know, when I first came, I said, no, we have to bring them back to their country of origin. And they said, sir, they won't accept them. Under President Obama, they wouldn't accept them. They would actually put airplanes on the runway so you couldn't land the plane loaded up with uh, gang members and very bad people. Prisoners came into our country. And I said, how much money do we give these countries? Sir, $750 million a year. That's a lot. They said, $750 million. All right, ended immediately. And the next morning, all three called me up separately. Sir, there seems to be a miscommunication. What's the problem? I said, you're not taking back your people that came illegally into our country. We want you to take them back. Sir, we would be honored to take them back. It would be <laughs> We would love to have MS-13 back in our country, sir. Sir, when will the payments start? <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, we, we just don't use our — the powers that we have. We have tremendous economic powers that we don't use. That includes with China. We had — you know, we took in more money with China than anybody. Nobody has ever even come close. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars with China. They were dumping steel, ruining our steel industry. They were doing things that we shouldn't have done. And I put tariffs of — 25 and 50 percent on them, different products coming in. And we took in hundreds of billions of dollars. And those tariffs are still on, you know. Uh, Biden can't — doesn't have the courage. He's so much money coming in. And he shouldn't. I guess they're probably trying to end it, but they're not able to because it's just so powerful, so much. Hundreds of billions of dollars. No other president took in 10 cents from China. But — I will also use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately. And as Jim Caviezel, who's a great guy, you know who he is? The movie, Sound of Freedom, he said, God's children are not for sale. Very <laughs>